Hello crafty friends, I'm Lean from Studio Kato and I am so happy to be back with another video for the new Alex Siberia designs release. There is a hop over on Instagram with giveaways you can win the entire release or a gift card which are both amazing prizes. So I will leave that linked down below. If you leave a, a, if you leave a comment on each Instagram post you get a chance to win uh, one of these prizes. So let's get into the video. I thought I would show off these giraffic friends. These are very cute critters, um, but what I'm doing here, let's explain that first before I introduce the um, stamp sets. Uh, I was showing how floppy the necks are. Because they are so long and dainty, it is really easy to stamp them a little bit crooked, a little bit off, which is no problem unless you want to use the coordinating dies. Because if they stamp a little bit off, you won't be able to cut them out with the coordinating dies. So to help with that, I cut a negative piece first. So I just cut out one of the giraffe's uh, coordinating dies and I used the negative piece to line up my stamp. You can also stamp right onto the positive piece. I have showed that in previous videos before, um, but I like to emboss my outlines and <laughs> to do that, it is easier to just work on a full piece of cardstock. So I'm using the negative space to line up my stamps here. Uh, I do get in quite close there. I didn't show my full face, <laughs> um, so it took me a little bit to line them up perfectly, but once that was done, I could stamp all of the images in Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. I love my Misty because I can stamp so many images at once. I'm using Clairefontaine DCB 250 GSM cardstock, which is great for alcohol marker coloring, and that's what I'm doing. I'm using my Ohuhu markers for this. I'm speeding through the coloring. I do the <laughs> exact same thing every time. So uh, I just go from my darkest marker to my lightest and I try to bring in as much contrast between my darkest color and my lightest color as I can. I went for very bright colors for this card because I just, I love these critters so much and I wanted them to stand out um, a lot. So I wanted to really make the colors pop here. Uh, that's really all that I, there is to say about the coloring. I don't really know how I color. I just go from my darkest to my lightest marker and that's it. So you can watch me color and I can rave about these critters a little bit more. I love all the small stems in this set. And I also love, I don't think I showed it in this video, um, but I really like that all of the sentiment stem sets or all of the sentiment stamps in this stamp set and in all of the sets in this release have coordinating dies. Every single sentiment has a coordinating die, which is such a good detail. I used to not, and I still don't, uh, purchase a lot of coordinating dies myself. If I get them from design teamwork, I'm very happy with them. Um, but coordinating dies are a luxury that I rarely <laughs> can afford. So, I, I'm usually a little bit doubtful about buying them, but if they have coordinating dies for sentiments, I add them to my card immediately. I think a sentiment is so much easier to use if you're able to cut it out with a die. So I love that. I love that they are uh, available in every single stem set uh, from this release. So I put this in my Misty again. I stamped it again with Versafine Onyx Black Ink, which is a black pigment ink, so I can add clear embossing powder to this. That is really going to make the outline pop. Um, it's very crisp black anyway, but this is going to make it glossy and shiny, and I just love that look. Then I cut that out with the coordinating dies, and now I'm working on a very vibrant background. Now this is the back side of the piece I started out with because I messed up the first time. I used a pink and I did the same thing here. I don't know why I tried the same pink again, but this is a pink. I don't even, I'm not even sure which color it was anymore, but it's way too red to blend nicely with this cold purple. It's way too warm of a pink. So I switched it out. I'm pretty sure this is picked raspberry now, and that is a much cooler pink, so it blends beautifully with that cooler purple. So don't try to mix your warm tones with your cool tones. It is not going to end well. Uh, try to mix your cool tones with your cool tones. I keep meaning to do a color theory video, but 
I don't know if I know enough color theory to do that. So once that was done, I added a little bit of splatter. I also just splattered on some um, clear water so I could lift the ink in some places. These are Distress Spray Stains. I don't know if I even mentioned that. And then I blended on some green. I'm really speeding through this video because otherwise this would be way too long. But this is a card that had a couple of... <laughs> It had a lot of steps, and I loved all of them. But this was a card that took me uh, an hour and a half to make, probably, um, which I loved every single second of it. But it's harder to edit those videos and to talk through it. Now, the longest part of this video, there is not too much to say about that, but I did want to leave it in because I struggle with it sometimes. Uh, this is putting everything together. And when you have so many moving pieces or so many pieces on a card, it is a little bit overwhelming sometimes. And you can see me tearing up pieces once I've already glued them down, like that piece of grass there it was a little bit too low. And then I just cut off the head of the giraffe. <laughs> um, my idea for this card was to use this uh, stamp. I think it's meant to be a bush, actually. Uh, the clouds I used, this is a bush stem, but I colored it like a cloud, and I think someone else for this release also did that, and I really like that you can use it as both. Um, but I colored them pink, there are little hearts or flowers in the cloud slash bush, so I colored those a darker pink as well. And now I want to make the giraffes a little bit taller and have their heads peek over the clouds. So that takes a little bit of finagling because I was lazy and I didn't want to stamp and color three bushes. That was really my issue for this card. I thought three bushes would be too, or three clouds would be too much in the sky. It would be a little bit too heavy. So I struggled to get a placement that I liked with two clouds and uh, the way I remedied that is I cut them pretty much immediately. So before I glued down the giraffe heads I um, put some purple tape on the clouds where I liked their placement and then I brought in my paper trimmer and I trimmed off anything that was hanging off the side of this panel. That is also why I didn't glue this panel immediately to my card base. Usually I just work from the panel upwards. I or from my card base upwards, so I glue my background onto my card base first, and then I glue everything else onto that. Uh, but this time I knew I wanted the clouds to overhang a little bit, and I didn't want them to, um, to cut them off over the card base, because I knew I would have a, a little bit of a white border around it. I don't know. I just... I just knew I wanted to cut them off at this point and I didn't want to let them overlap with the card base. So I did that and then I put some foam tape behind them to prep them up over the giraffe necks. And then I can, I have a couple more pieces to work with here for the clouds. So I knew where the heads should be placed. I tried to line them up with the necks. I think I messed it up actually. <laughs> the, um, the girl giraffe is um i think it's a little bit off i notice it i don't think you will but it, eh, I, I think i want to uh try to line that up line that up a little bit better then i'm just putting all the pieces of that cloud of those clouds um on the top there and i'm adding some flowers to the base i colored some pink ones a very bright pink and some very bright orange ones um, I have a very bright background as well to work with. I really, really wanted to make a super busy and colorful card, which I think I succeeded in. I like to keep my critter cards usually very simple because I struggle with critter cards and making scenes and uh, all the little pieces you need for those. But I really wanted to commit today, so I did. Once everything was glued down or adhered down with foam tape, I could glue that down on my card base and that's it. This is a mini slimline card and I did make it top folding. I have paper large enough to do that for mini slimlines. If you don't but you do want to make a top folding mini slimline card, you could um, cut two separate pieces. The front piece would be just the exact size you need for your mini slimline. And then the back piece would be a little bit taller 
and you just put the fold in there and then you glue uh, that little flap to the back of your front piece. That totally makes sense to me. I don't know if it makes sense to you. <laughs> I really like top folding cards, even many slimline ones, because they display better on a shelf, I think. So yeah, that's why I always try to make top folding card bases. I hope you like the card, I hope you like the video. Don't forget to head on over to the Instagram hop for a chance to win some amazing prizes. And I will also leave our earlier blog hop in, linked in the description below. I also made a video for that. I will leave the, that linked as well, so you can check that out too. Thank you so much for watching. This video was very, very fast. I hope you can still understand me, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!